area around the site. Then we have A2. which is a colored rendering of our proposed site plan. We have A3, which is uh, the, a colorized version of the architectural plans which were submitted as part of the, uh, the application package. Uh, specifically, A3 is the, uh, the fuel canopy and the trash enclosure. And then A4 is uh, colored elevations of the building and uh, the floor plan. If, it's, uh, if it pleases the board, I, it might be easier if I just stand here and present to the, with the exhibit. That'll be fine. Thank you. So, as Mr. Paparo mentioned, we are uh, block uh, 2903, lot 1, which is situated at the southwest corner of essentially the intersection of South Main Street and Hickory Street. Uh, South Main Street is set back a little bit from Main Street, as uh, I'm sure the board is aware. Uh, we also have frontage along Windsor Place. <laughs> All three roads are municipal roads. The site is currently developed with uh, a little over 21,000 square feet of mixed-use retail. Uh, site has 76 parking spaces, a uh, number of access points, uh, including access to all three frontages. Uh, we're proposing to uh, demolish all of the existing improvements. Uh, and switching to A2. We are proposing to construct a 5,051 square foot Wawa uh, convenience store uh, with the associated sale of automotive fuels beneath a 55 foot by 96 foot canopy. Uh, the site will be oriented towards South Main Street uh, with the canopy directly off the, the, main, the South Main Street frontage and then the store uh, just a short distance behind the canopy. As with uh, existing conditions, we're proposing access to all three streets. We have a, because South Main is a one way in the easterly direction, we're proposing a right in and right out driveway along South Main Street. We're proposing a full movement driveway along Hickory, uh, which allows rights and lefts in and out. And then we're proposing a right out and uh, left turn in off of Windsor Place, because the, at the location, the uh, the driveway is situated, it's basically at the dead end of Windsor Place. Windsor Place dead ends because just behind us to our south is, is the train tracks. Uh, the site includes 44 parking spaces, uh, which is in excess of ordinance requirements. Um, we're also proposing two uh, air pump spaces for you know, customers to come and fill their tires with air. Uh, we're proposing all new sidewalks and curbs al uh, along the perimeter of the site, along with pedestrian uh, connectivity directly to the front of the store. The store itself has one entrance at the front facing South Main Street. It has a dedicated loading zone at the rear for deliveries and has a detached trash enclosure for refuse and recyclables. We're also proposing a sign package, which includes two monument signs, one along South Main Street and one along Hickory Street. Uh, both monument signs fully conform with the ordinance requirements. They're a little over nine feet tall and 35 square feet in area. The <coughs> they meet the required setbacks. Um, I, mentioned, I mentioned we're, propo uh, we're proposing parking in excess of the ordinance requirements. Uh, this is based on Wawa's experience uh, operating a number of stores throughout New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, basically up and down the East Coast uh, about at this point. And their experience is to provide some additional parking more on the order of 
uh, one per 150 square feet, whereas the ordinance requires one per 200 square feet. And this basically just assures that during their peak hours, their absolute busiest times, everybody can efficiently and, sa and legally park on the site. Um, they don't want people parking in drive aisles or parking in the loading zone, various places on site where they might otherwise park if there wasn't a convenient parking spot. And being that it's a convenient store, if it's, there's a number of options for people to go get their coffee, if it's hard to get in and out and here and find a parking space, they'll go to one of the other places. They want people to be able to park. And we're actually reducing impervious surfaces from existing conditions, so the additional parking obviously doesn't harm anything. We're proposing uh, an ample landscape package, uh, along with uh, including uh, basically street trees along South Main, creating a nice streetscape environment. Um, we're proposing an LED lighting package, which includes um, pole-mounted lights, building-mounted lights, and of course, lights beneath the fuel canopy. Uh, this the, the lighting design meets Wawa's specific uh, lighting standards for security because it is a 24-hour use. They want to have uh, optimal lighting for both pedestrians and fuel attendants and employees uh, and the like. Uh, we're proposing to connect to um, all the public utilities, which uh, obviously serve the existing site, but we're going to be making new connections to all public utilities. Uh, with regards to stormwater management, the site currently has no formal stormwater management system. Um, we are uh, considered a major development based on the New Jersey uh, DEP stormwater management regulations, being that we're disturbing more than an acre of land. However, because we're in decreasing impervious surfaces, we meet our reduction requirements and aren't required to provide water quality. We're proposing a system of catch basins to collect water and convey it to the, uh, <coughs> the municipal storm sewer system in the adjacent roads following similar drainage patterns that it does today. A um, little more information on the store. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's a 24-7 operation, 24-7, 365. Uh, they, they have uh, uh, 10 to 12 employees per shift, three shifts per day. So they'll employ between full-time and part-time employees. Uh, there'll be about 50 total associates uh, at this location. Uh, the store will be fully company-owned and operated, as are all Wawa stores. Uh, they receive a number of deliveries from uh, a variety of different vehicles. Uh, so uh, three times per week, they receive dairy deliveries uh, and Wawa beverages that's directly from Wawa and that's by tractor trailer. They receive grocery deliveries four to five times a day, uh, also from a, a Wawa tractor trailer. And they also receive daily deliveries from smaller vendors for items such as newspapers, chips, soda, and all of those vendors and deliveries will use the, the loading area at the rear of the store. They also receive daily fuel deliveries. Well, um, I shouldn't say daily, uh, the, they receive fuel deliveries as needed. The fuel levels in the tanks are electronically monitored. So once the, the, the inventory level in a tank drops bef below a certain level, a truck is de dispatched to, to refuel the tanks. So it's about on the order of once per day. It may be a little less than once per day. It could even be twice per day. The fuel tanks themselves, there's three of them. Uh, they're situated at the corner of South Main and Hickory. Um, they're compartmentalized tanks, which allows them to hold multiple products in a single tank. Uh, they're all double-walled fiberglass tanks, uh, meeting or exceeding all the state federal regulations for fuel tanks. The product piping, same, all double-walled, meeting or exceeding uh, state and uh, federal regulations. Um, the tanks are monitored on a continuous basis, uh, both through the store and through Wawa headquarters. Uh, they're monitored in the, uh, the interstitial space between the two walls of the tank. There is a brine solution. So the purpose of that solution, it detects if there's an increase in volume, that means there's a breach to the inner wall. If there's a decrease in volume, there's a breach to the outer wall. When that happens, the fuel system is shut down and a containment uh, protocol goes into effect. All the staff, uh, both on site and obviously throughout 
uh, their, their management headquarters have multiple levels of training and uh, in both handling a situation such as that as well as just the response to it. Uh, the employees of the fueling area are complete, are Wawa employees. They're employed by this location, but they're completely separate from the store employees. So you don't have a, somebody who's pumping gas one minute and then going into the store and making a sandwich the next minute. They're two separate uh, employee types. Well, Mr. Gallagher, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, regarding the deliveries, I noticed in your plan set that was submitted to the board sheet 10 of 15, uh, you've actually gone and run a truck turning template for all of those delivery vehicles to demonstrate that all of the vehicles, including an emergency vehicle, a fire truck for the city, could navigate this site correctly. Is that correct? That's correct, and, and thank you. That, that brings me to uh, one item that Mr. Papara mentioned in our opening. We are requesting one design waiver, um, and it is directly related to, to the site engineering. The ordinance requires a maximum of 25 feet in curb line opening for a driveway. And we're proposing to exceed that at, at all three of our driveways. And the reason being is a standard driveway is 25 feet. So for instance, this, the driveway out to Hickory Street is 25 feet wide at its throat. However, when it flares out, at the cur there's a radius on the curb, when it flares out, that's where we exceed the 25 feet, and the reason for that is to allow the deliver not only the delivery vehicles, but the customer vehicles and emer any emergency vehicles to be able to, you know, s uh, navigate that turn without running over the curb, essentially. So we have a 25-foot driveway out to Windsor Place, a 25-foot driveway out to Hickory Street, and a 30-foot driveway to South Main. Uh, however, when you measure them at the actual curb line opening, they exceed the maximum 25 feet permitted. But it is, it is purely just to get vehicles onto and off of the site uh, without having to run over the curbs. Um, as, he, as Mr. Paparo mentioned, we, are, we did provide a, a truck circulation exhibit in the plan set, which shows how the, the trucks will actually maneuver through the site, because we, we obviously don't want to design a site that doesn't actually work for the number of vehicles that are going to be uh, stopping by this location on a daily basis. And uh, going to A3, I mentioned this is the, the canopy elevation. And it just shows you how <coughs> the canopy is laid out and how the, the the pumps and the, uh, the attendants will uh, operate the area. There's kiosks between the attendants. Between the, the, the product dispensers, um, there's three rows of two product dispensers for a total of uh, six uh, MPDs, um, which allows for 12 fueling positions. So 12 uh, vehicles can fuel at this location at one time. Um, each pump has two hoses. They're what's called a three plus one pump, uh, which allows them to serve three grades of uh, unleaded fuel. Oh, excuse me, it's a four plus one pump now. <laughs> they recently changed that. Uh, four, four grades of different uh, unleaded fuels and then one of the, a separate hose uh, for diesel. They will be selling diesel fuel at this location to uh, passenger vehicles and light trucks, such as a, a landscaper or uh, you know, somebody with a, 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 an oversized uh, pickup truck, for instance. But Mr. Gallagher, just to clarify, the, this diesel will not be fast flow diesel for a tractor trailer or any larger vehicle, correct? Correct. Uh, they do have low flow nozzles, so unless a, a truck driver has uh, a couple hours to spare, uh, th those types of vehicles will not be fueling at this location. Plus, the attendants are trained to turn them away, and they also don't accept uh, the, the credit cards that, uh, that truck drivers typically, typically carry for fueling. Sticking on operations and moving on to A4, which is the building. The, the store has a single customer entrance at the front of the store, as I mentioned, uh, facing South Main. Uh, you can see uh, the, also see the building sign, which conforms with the ordinance requirements. It's in nicely in scale in proportion with the building. Uh, moving around to the rear of the building, where you have your loading area. 
Um, you have uh, two e Mandor exits, which are for uh, employees. Also, um, I believe this one's also an emergency exit, if need be. And then you have your delivery door, which is you know, your standard roll-up garage door. So the trucks, when they pull around to the rear, they park with the passenger side along the building, and they, they offload from the passenger side right into this, uh, this rear door. <coughs> and uh, the, the loading zone itself is of ample size. You can fit, fully fit a truck, uh, tra a tractor trailer in the loading zone and still have two-way traffic in the drive aisle adjacent to it behind the building. And this is all due to the fact that, as I mentioned, they do receive an, a number of deliveries per day, so they want to make sure that there's no obstructions to traffic flow. And Mr. Gallagher, that loading function happens to the rear of the building, is that correct? That is correct. Back to A2, this striped area is the loading zone. Uh, I also mentioned the trash enclosure. They have uh, trash pickups three to four times per week, depending on uh, the intensity of the store. There's also um, all the mechanicals are roof mounted behind a parapet wall, so you really have an attractive uh, building when, when viewed from the street. There's no, you know, there's, there's nothing sticking up above the parapet, uh, a parapet wall. That really sums up uh, how, how we laid out the site. Um, as I mentioned, we're reducing impervious surfaces. We comply with all the bulk zoning requirements, setbacks, coverages, et cetera. Um, uh, and this, this is a, a, a very, uh, very typical layout of a, a Wawa store. It's a desirable layout. You know, the way the, the canopy is in front of the store, you have multiple street frontages. Uh, sometimes we have to come up with some pretty creative configurations, but this is, this is the perfect configuration for this store. You have your canopy out front, which is kind of their calling card. You can see that sloped roof on the canopy, uh, and then it blends in nicely with the store standing behind it. So it really, this, this was a perfect site for this, this use. And Mr. Gallagher, you've had an opportunity to review the reports from the board's consultants. And I have. Specifically, I'm referring to the CP Professional Services Report uh, last updated uh, April 14, 2020, and there was a report from the uh, Nishwain Group April 10, 2020. Um, from an engineering standpoint, uh, I know you've addressed the design waiver for the curb opening. And it's my understanding your testimony is that's for a safety benefit and making sure that vehicles can enter and, ex and exit these driveways safely. Um, do you have any uh, problems complying with any of the requests or recommendations of the board's engineering consultant? Uh, no, uh, given the time we've had between when we submitted the application and this evening, we had an opportunity uh, to review um, uh, Nishwain's and CP's uh, initial review letters. Make, we, ha we had a, a very productive uh, technical meeting uh, back in March before everything went on lockdown. <laughs> and. Uh, that was actually, I think that was the last meeting I had been to in person uh, until uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, everything else has been on Zoom. <laughs> uh, but we were able to make revisions and resubmit plans that complied with virtually every comment that was in uh, both of the letters. And uh, uh, I think the only remaining comments that uh, are still in the letters today were to provide some testimony, which I believe I've touched on in my, in my direct. Um, so there's nothing remaining in the letters uh, that we cannot, um, we can't comply with. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Chairman, I have no further direct for Mr. Gallagher. Are there any questions for our Mr. Gallagher from any uh, board member? Mr. Faustin. Thank you for coming and thank you for Just your speaking to the microphone, please. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, my question, uh, you mentioned that uh, there are going to be 44 parking space, uh, spaces, right? Yeah. And yes. uh, you, you um, there are going to be uh, 50 employees. 
Yes, not all at one time, though. Uh, there'll be ten, about 10 to 12 employees during any one shift. So of those 44 spaces, theoretically, 12 would be taken up by an employee, provided they each drive their own car. Uh, my question is, uh, how, many, how many spaces are going to be reserved for the personnel, and how many are going to be reserved for, for the customers? Well, the, um, the, the store managers just direct the employees to park in the most rem remote spaces on the site. So they would, the ideally, they would be parking in this area or back behind the store, stores that aren't the, those prime spaces that are going to be the most desirable to a customer. They don't really assign parking spaces or have reserved spaces. They just direct their employees to park in a certain area. A second, second question is, uh, uh, did, you, did you do a, a topography study uh, in the location? My firm didn't, but uh, as part of the application, a survey was performed, which included uh, topography and utilities, and the whole site plan package was designed around that, that survey. Yeah, because uh, a topography study would would uh, allow us to know how far a toxic agent can reach in case in case of leakage. The, so, if there's gonna be a, some kind of toxic plant in the area, we have to know how far if there is leakage, how far toxic agent can reach. So, as part of Wawa's program that they implement when they go onto a site, they, they basically do an environmental study before anything is put in the ground, and they set a baseline. And as part of that, that environmental study, they put in a number of monitoring wells on site. So that's one of the things that's, that's monitored on a regular basis uh, as part of the fuel package. So that, those are going to remain in place once the, the store is constructed. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Member Mobley. I have two questions. Just to kind of follow up that, uh, the last question from my colleague, will there be a containment berm um, in the area in the event that there is a leakage, a spill? Uh, there, there isn't necessarily a berm. Uh, the, there's a, a, you know, ridges at the driveways, but the, the entire fuel area is relatively you know, self-contained. Uh, and it, you know, there, there's not many instances of these types of, uh, you know, discharges happening. But you know, any, anything can happen, and they do have an emergency response plan of how the employees are supposed to treat that, and they have uh, uh, specialists that come in from offsite and, and handle uh, situations like that. Okay, Mr. Gallagher, about how long will it take for the uh, construction uh, before the store will open? Um, it, 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 it can vary. It usually takes between 7 to 12 months, sometimes a little longer. Uh, luckily, we don't have to deal with uh, the NJDOT at this location, which can be a delay. So I, I would say it usually takes 7 to 12 months. Okay. And you indicated that there's going to be a combination of uh, full-time and part-time totaling about 50 employees. How will those, uh, how will those employees be sourced? Um, well, they, they advertise as soon as the store reaches a, a certain point in construction not only at the site but on their web page and uh, they just look for the local community to, to come and fill out applications. And on average, what's the, what is the hourly wage? Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure off the top of my head, uh, though I do know that they, uh, they, are, uh, they do have the opportunity to receive benefits uh, as well. Uh, while I was actually in an ESOP, so they can even become uh, uh, owners in, in the company. Um, uh, and the, the, they have a number of management positions in the store itself, um, and after a certain time, I know some <coughs> local managers are moved around based on their success levels, so there's a lot of opportunities for upward growth. Um, it, it's a, from what I can see, it's a, it's a fantastic place to work. Thank you. Member Jones. Um, will there be any electric uh, vehicle charging stations? On site? So that's something that Wawa evaluates after the store is uh, up and running. Uh, they are, d uh, they're, 
doing a number of test sites with, uh, with Tesla where they're partnering with them to provide charging stations. And they basically wait to s for the store to open, see how it operates, and see what kind of demand there is for a charging station at that location before they make the actual decision. So in the event that they, sol they saw that this store was a prime candidate for that, they would likely come back to the board at a future date to put in uh, a charging station. Member uh, Anuke. Yeah, hello, uh, good evening. Is there any specific provisions that is made for hiring Orange residents? Um, not, unfortunately, not that I'm aware of, um, but I mean, it's, a, it, it's, it's kind of a, a walkable uh, type of use and business. So they want to build a strong community presence. They often, they'll uh, sponsor little league teams. They'll get involved with the local uh, fire and police departments. Uh, so they really want to be a part of the community in every municipality that they enter. Uh, so they're looking to hire from, from within the municipality. They want people to have uh, an easy place that they can leave their house and, and go to work. If I could, Chairman, if I could just add to that, I just wanted to double check before I made a statement. Um, I've, I've represented Wawa in the past and I just wanted to make sure um, that is something that they do work with the local communities. They host job fairs and they do engage with the local community to make sure that there is an opportunity for local residents to, uh, to do that. So that's something that we can certainly, if this application is approved, we could uh, reach out to Wawa management and make sure that before the, the, the site is built that there is an outreach to the city for, for that job fair or some kind of interconnection. So that is something they've done at other locations, but I just wanted to make sure that that's a continuing policy of the company to work with the local community to have a job fair or another um, event to let people know that they're hiring. Uh, thank you. Uh, member Foster. As uh, as you the as the you get the business uh, gonna be located or uh, is located uh, close by the major woods in New Jersey, the, so it's highly it's highly encouraging or recommended. So you get uh, you provide some uh, electric charging station because uh, now they are it's a it's a with the technology development of uh, electric cars and if someone is on the 20 or 95 or, or Garden State Parkway and driving an electric uh, vehicle so now I don't know I'm not talking about the 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 existing uh, uh, businesses but if you intend to build a new stuff right now it's highly recommended to at least few, few, uh, few stuff like this. Uh, it's highly recommended right now. Uh, I, I agree, and uh, it's th that's exactly why they have this program in place. Unfortunately, it's just two different. You know, this is part of their real estate department, and that's a separate operations department that makes that decision. So, unfortunately, we can't yet spin it right into the site plan uh, design and approval process. Although I, I will tell you, uh, you mentioned having forethought. They do install conduits and things like that uh, and sleeves all the infrastructure in place so that if they make that decision, they don't have to rip up the entire site to put in a charging station. I mentioned that the fuel tanks are compartmentalized. Part of the reason they did that is because they want to have the opportunity to test a number of different fuel products while still serving the typical fuel, fuel products that we put in our cars every day. So they want to be prepared for what's coming next and they take the steps that they can at the time that they approach an application. Is there anything else from Mr. Gallagher, from any member? Seeing none, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Our uh, next and final witness is Elizabeth Dolan. Uh, Ms. Dolan is our traffic engineer. She put together the uh, traffic impact study that was included in your package when we filed the application. Mr. 
would you, uh, you agree to tell the truth, the whole truth? Yes, I do. Uh, Ms. Dolan, your uh, name and affiliation for the record? Elizabeth Dolan, D-O-L-A-N, Dolan and Dean Consulting Engineers, 181 West High Street in Somerville, New Jersey. Ms. Dolan, for the benefit of the board and public, can you provide your education, area of expertise, and the licenses you hold? Yes, I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering from Rutgers University. I've been uh, practicing in the field of traffic engineering for over 30 years. I am licensed in New Jersey, and my license is in good standing. I'm also licensed in Pennsylvania, Delaware, and New York. Um, I'm a member of the Institute of Transportation Engineers, and I've testified in over 250 municipalities before planning and zoning boards, um, and I have been accepted as an expert in traffic in all cases. Thank you, Ms. Dolan. Chairman, I would offer Ms. Dolan as an expert in the field of traffic engineering. The board will accept Ms. Dolan as an expert in traffic, and your testimony will be limited to that of traffic. Yes, that's Thank correct. Ms. Dolan, I mentioned that you submitted a traffic impact statement as part of this submission. Is that correct? That is correct. And you've also uh, worked with the applicant and its professionals on the design of the site plan. You're familiar with the configuration, the circulation? Yes, I am. Uh, can you provide the benefit of what your findings were from analyzing this site and the surrounding roadway network? Yes, and my testimony is largely summarized in the April 8, 2019 traffic impact statement that was prepared and submitted as part of this application. And as you heard from Mr. Gallagher and certainly are familiar with the site, you know that it's already an existing commercial development with multiple driveways on all frontages. Um, the site has historically generated traffic um, and certainly the Wawa improvement uh, will continue to make this a commercial um, uh, use for the, the neighboring area as well as people traveling through uh, the, the municipality. Um, Wawas are busy. Uh, Wawas are typically busiest in the morning peak hour as people are traveling to work. Uh, we're estimating about 200 to 210 vehicles will visit this site during the busiest hour in the morning and less activity is expected during a weekday evening. Again, uh, peak activity is typically coincident with, with commuter hours. Uh, things are certainly a little bit different these days, but the, um, the overall uh, intensity of activity at Wawa's typically coincides with peak street activity because the majority of people are drawn into the site as they're passing by. Uh, so we're not looking at a su significant increase in traffic from the prior uh, or existing use. Uh, the majority of the Wawa trips are expected to be what we call pass by, already traveling along um, Main Street or South Main Street and diverted into the site. Um, as Mr. Gallagher explained, and as you've um, reviewed the site plan, you know that we're distributing our site traffic over the three frontages. Um, of course, we've got one dead end, but that um, configuration of the driveway and the full circulation around the building will allow uh, vehicles to exit to the um, Windsor side as well as Hickory, um, and of course with the main driveway on South Main. There's full circulation around this building, a two-way circulation aisle, uh, the design uh, promotes safe and efficient two-way vehicular flow on site. Uh, there's clear sight lines for pedestrians to cross the uh, drive aisles. And there's a uh, separate loading area to the rear of the building so that trucks uh, delivering product to the store uh, are commingling with the, um, the customer traffic. And um, as also pointed out, the um, underground fuel storage tanks are towards the um, Hickory front corner at South Main, uh, so that's well away from any of the driveways, and when that uh, tanker is dropping fuel, it won't obstruct uh, access or circulation through the site. Uh, Mr. Gallagher also testified about the parking. Uh, we have 44 spaces, and that's sort of a standard for a Wawa. Um, the Institute of Transportation Engineers, in their uh, most recent um, trip generation manual, identified uh, Wawa and uh, similar uses as a super convenience store and associated with that is the development of the ITE trip rate which would calculate about 41 or 42 spaces of, uh, for this use based on uh, studies at similar larger convenience stores that offer gas and having represented um, several Wawa applications I would say this is consistent with their uh, program and the idea is to allow the customers to enter the site and readily find a parking space uh, without having to recirculate. And the parking is sort of, it's high turnover 
Uh, so it's a very comfortable design with full circulation, multiple access points, and multiple fueling positions, again, with the goal of accommodating the customers as they come in. They can readily uh, find a fueling position that matches their gas tank location and uh, eliminate the potential for vehicular queuing on site. Uh, so I find the design to be very um, appropriate and uh, consistent with Mr. Gallagher's testimony. Uh, it will provide safe and efficient access and circulation, not only for the customer uh, and passenger vehicles, but it's also been designed and analyzed to accommodate the truck traffic because we will be uh, receiving tractor-trailer deliveries of both product to the store as well as gas. Uh, thank you, Ms. Dolan. Uh, you heard Mr. Gallagher's testimony regarding the one design waiver that's needed for this application regarding the width of the curb opening. Uh, Mr. Gallagher stated that that would allow uh, vehicles to enter without having to uh, navigate around curbs or, or the like. Um, in your professional opinion as a traffic engineer who studies circulation, uh, do you find justification for that waiver? I do, and I, again, I would concur with Mr. Gallagher's testimony and um, having reviewed the uh, truck circulation exhibits and uh, understanding the need to accommodate the different sizes of vehicles that will visit this site, uh, I would say that that would be an appropriate waiver to grant. Thank you, Ms. Dolan. Chairman, I have no further direct from Ms. Dolan at this time. Are there any questions from Ms. Dolan from any of the board members? Mr. Fausten. Elizabeth, uh, you know, fueling activities uh, attract more cars coming in the area. So, uh, you know, we have uh, we have the McDonald's Magda uh, in front of the, your si the site of uh, of this business, and uh, we have a lot of uh, pedestrian, a, a lot of people. We have uh, the a bus station, a bus stop, right here. And we have the Lilo Park. So the, we have a lot of people working in, in this area. As, uh, as uh, the gas station is going to attract more cars, uh, what, uh, you, what's your, uh, do you work with the, 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 the police uh, department uh, about the uh, safety of this area? Um, we've not reached out directly to the police department, but certainly understand and, and want to promote uh, pedestrian safety and, and connectivity. Um, I've, the, the numbers of trips that I talked about are vehicular trips, but certainly in an area like this, we would expect to have some um, walking, you know, pedestrian trips. Uh, so that may reduce the vehicular intensity. Um, I believe there was a comment in the engineer's um, review letter about the combination of trips. Uh, typically, um, a Wawa with gas or a Wawa without gas is still pretty busy in the morning and, and generating about 200 trips. Um, so w based on some of the uh, counts and studies we've done, I would think there'd be a good 30 percent of gas trips, 30 percent of um, store trips, and then about a 20 to 25 percent overlap of shared trips. But we didn't credit any, any pedestrian trips, but we certainly here would, would hope and expect to draw from the people who are walking through the area. Uh, do you have an I idea about uh, opening and closing schedule for the daily? Uh, the, I believe the store is 24-7. 24-7. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. You're welcome. Anything else for Ms. Dolden at this time? Thank you, Ms. Dolan. You're welcome. Uh, Chairman, I have no further direct witnesses. Obviously, uh, the witnesses are available for public comment or question, uh, but I had, that was the uh, sub and substance of our witnesses and testimony. Um, I would obviously like to give a closing statement before the board takes any action, but um, we'll turn it over to you and the public at this time. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank at, you. This, at this time, we will hear from the board experts and uh, everyone got a copy of Mr. Um, Hazel's report for our pl the board planner. Um, unfortunately, he was unable to make it, but everyone has a copy of his report. And so if you have any questions, we will try to address them as best we can. We do have um, Mr. Wasbrock here, the board engineer, to speak to his report and help us answer any questions that you may have 
for uh, Mr. Hazel's report. So Mr. West Wasbrock. Hard with these masks. Uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> gotta go. No. <laughs> I'll talk best I can. Uh, first off, the, this application. Sorry? You gonna get you sworn in first? Yeah. Uh, Swasbrock, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth? I do. Uh, as it was stated in the testimony, this application is for a conditional use in the redevelopment zone. The conditions of that use, uh, from my review and from Mr. Hazel's review, have been met, uh, which you know, makes this a uh, fairly straightforward application from a technical perspective. Uh, of zoning. Uh, we don't have variances being requested or sought. Uh, I do have some, some follow-up comments or questions regarding the testimony that was provided, uh, mainly the turning radius, the design waiver, which I think is appropriate for vehicles entering exit, exiting. Uh, I would like to hear some testimony on what safety measures were, are in place in the design or what could be added for the increased um, distance that pedestrians will need to, to travel across those driveways. Uh, as you, you heard and, and even questioned by um, the board member that this area is a, a large walking area within the town and, and pedestrian concern is as important as the vehicular concern. Mr. Farrell, did you want, okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gallagher, uh, in response to the board engineer's question, and it does fit in exactly with the question that was posed to Ms. Dolan regarding pedestrian safety, have you had an opportunity to uh, come up with a potential uh, solution for that question? Uh, certainly. Uh, as I mentioned during my, my testimony, we're proposing sidewalks along all three frontages. Well, there are sidewalks, but we're re proposing to replace them. Uh, we're also going to be including uh, ADA, ADA ramps and crosswalks at every single uh, driveway crossing, including an internal crosswalk uh, to provide pedestrian connectivity to the store itself. We're also going to be replacing the, uh, the ramps at the, that basically cross over South Main Street to the park and at the corner of South Main and, Hick and, uh, and Hickory. So <coughs> the, obviously the crosswalks and the ramps in and of themselves are s pedestrian safety features, but there's a number of other things we can do to uh, just enhance the safety, uh, through s mainly through signage and striping, uh, we, such as uh, advanced warning signs for pedestrian crossings, uh, possibly flashing beacon signs so that people, uh, motorists know as they're traveling down South Main that they're approaching a pedestrian crossing, uh, and some other striping we can add to the roadway itself that makes it clear that uh, there's, there's the increased likelihood of pedestrian activity and to be aware. And conversely, the same for the pedestrians as well. We can let them uh, include signage on the site, which alerts them to the delivery areas and the higher traffic areas of the site. So if this board were inclined to approve this application, you have no objection to working with the board engineer on adding some pedestrian safety features that you've outlined? Absolutely not. Happy to. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. The other open items in my report, and, and I don't know, Mr. Gallagher, um, I heard him correctly, there was, there was no objection to the comments made, but there are some open items that were started before COVID hit us with uh, coordinating the sanitary and storm sewer connections with the um, departments. And we need to pick that up and continue on that, that vein. But based upon the plans that have been submitted, there's enough detail to show that yes, the connections can be made. It's just the fine tuning that needs to get worked out. that I don't have any other comments as I said before this is are there any questions from any of the board members for the board engineer okay. all right thank you mr. Wasbrock at this time we will open public port I have a motion to open public portion motion. we have a motion from member Mobley Second. Is there a second? A second from Member Faustin? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? 
Public portion is now open. If there's anyone that would like to speak to this application, please step forward to the microphone. Clearly state your name, your address, and any concerns that you may have regarding this application. Hi, my name is James Ward. Uh, I reside at 743 Haxton Avenue. Um, I would like to first comment by saying that I think that this is a fantastic presentation. Um, you all have clearly thought about uh, what you're going to do here. Um, the design is uh, it's good and well placed. Um, I would just caution that we have a, a once in a lifetime opportunity at this historic site to do better. Um, this is a well positioned site that historically had a, had a beautiful church at this location. And in, during a, uh, a previous administration, uh, they, they thought that it, would, it was saw fit to put the existing building there, which was a travesty. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity to change this. And I think that uh, this board, this governing body, should be thinking about this further more. Um, there are multiple prime locations within the city of Orange that this well-designed Wawa could be placed alternately. Uh, there are two vacant gas stations on Central Avenue and Scotland that have been empty for over a decade. And the both of them would, would suffice for this. You're going to get better access for passerby traffic. Uh, it's a much broader street that's going to accommodate the 200 or so people at peak hours. And there's already a gas station there. We don't have to change its use. Um, additionally, I would say that some of the questions that were, that were posed by some of the people in the public um, in terms of how many people will be employed here, um, having provisions for Orange residents to have priority to, to work at this location, I think that that's great that these things were brought up not only by the board, but you guys had good, good answers to them. Um, I just really think that we need to be thinking more about the historic nature of the site. Uh, it was mentioned that there's a park across the street. That park commemorates, uh, I believe it was World War I veterans that passed away uh, that came from this town. It's completely ignored in this plan. Um, we, have, uh, we, have a, uh, we have a master plan from 2018 that does not have provision for this. And there's currently a Main Street redevelopment plan that is not talking about putting gas stations on our historic Main Street. Uh, like I said, this is a good design. And I think the city of Orange should have this design, just not at this location. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Is there anyone else on the public that would like to speak to this application? Please step forward to the microphone. Clearly state your name, your address, and your concern. Karen Wells, 288 Highland Avenue, Orange. My concerns are the same as <clears throat> Mr. Ward's. It, it, it pains me that our historic Main Street is not even considered in this when we have a park, which was already destroyed somewhat when they put a division through it some years ago, tore that church down, and put up Orange Commons. Orange Commons was a major mistake. But to put a Wawa there is another major mistake when one block down over the Conrail site, there's the old Rheingold factory that's been sitting there for decades with nothing on it, which is a site. You'd have to put a gas station there. And as Mr. Ward mentioned, on Scotland Road, there are two gas stations now that have been boarded up, just, just sitting there doing nothing. Why would, and, and then we've got a major bus stop on our main street that's there, and you've got big 18-wheeler gas deliveries being made on our main street. That destroys our main street. And again, it wasn't addressed in the master plan, and it wasn't addressed in the main street redevelopment, which we just had a meeting on. There was no mention of it whatsoever. So I think we're being ignored. And what brings the money into your town is the way your town looks. We used to be beautiful. Right across from where this is, there's a historic church. It's called Gracie, it's called the uh, Epiphany uh, Church now. But it was Grace Episcopal Church built by 
George Bush's great-great-grandfather. That's across the street. They tore down the Y that was there. I mean, to destroy our Main Street is just, it, it, I, don't, I don't see the sense in it. Uh, when there's so many other places where this could be. I think the design is fine too. I think it's well thought out and all that. But the location is not, um, there's, there's no justification for it whatsoever. Thank you, Ms. Wells. Anyone else from the public? Entertain a motion to close? Have a motion from Member Mobley. Is there a second? Second. Second from Vice Chair Jones. Are there any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Public portion is now closed. At this time, I will entertain a motion for this application. Motion to approve preliminary and fi <coughs> final site plan for case number 20-04164 South Main Street. As a condition of approval, applicant will comply with the recommendations of the board professionals as detailed in the engineer's report dated March 12, 2020 and updated April 14, 2020 and the planner report dated April 10, 2020. Uh, this approval will include a design waiver for curb opening widths of 35 feet, 45 feet, 60 feet on Windsor Place, Sickery Street, and South Main Street, respectively. The applicant will also work closely with the board engineer um, to, um, sorry, I lost my space, to, um, to put in any pro, uh, pedestrian safety precautions. Pedestrian safety precautions. Yes, measures for pedestrian safety measures at the site. We have a motion from Vice Chair Jones. Is there a second? Second. We have a second from Member Mobley. And Mr. Uh, Papara, I do apologize. You did say you wanted to okay. have your closing. Chairman, that's. I apologize. That's okay, Chairman. I appreciate it. I know it's the hour's getting late, and, and these are unusual circumstances being outdoors. So for purposes of time, I'll, I'll defer. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions on the motion? Madam Secretary. I have a question. Oh, a question from Member of Austin. Yeah. Uh, I want to say just one uh, something about uh, uh, the public questions opening. The, so we are the planning board. The, so the nature of the business gonna be, gonna, that are going to be planted over there. So it's, uh, the, it was permitted by the zoning board. And maybe I wouldn't vote for if they did introduce, introduce in this package a permit from the zoning board. The, as they do, they did, they have the a permit from the zoning board. This is why I'm gonna vote yes to because the commotality, the, the, the everything that's supposed to be uh, uh, appreciated as, uh, as plan, you know, as planning uh, met the requirement. The, so we're not the zoning board. This is why I'm gonna vote yes uh, for this, uh, for this uh, application. Are there any other, any other questions? Madam Secretary. Member on Member on UK? Yes. Yes. Member Faustin? Yes. Member Mobley? Yes. Vice Chair Jones? Yes. Mayor Warren? Yes. 
Chairman Holmes? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for your time and your consideration this evening. Again, we do appreciate the accommodation and uh, the work that your consultants have put into uh, this project, working with us throughout the process. Thank you all, and thank you to the public for coming out this evening. Proud, thank you for coming out, and welcome to Orange. So as we move the agenda, the next item is old business. Is there any old business at this time? I do want to ask if there was any, if we have a, a report or a follow-up or something from the fire department. We haven't received reports from the fire department. So where are we with that? When we have our, when we have our technical review, committee meetings, um, they do give their commentary then, um, but I will request again a written report so I can include in the packets. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Is there any other old business? Is there any new business at this time? And any new business? Yeah. All right. Well, at this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. We have a motion from Member Mobley and a second, second from Please Vice Chair in. Jones. Are there any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Have a good night. <laughs>